Welcome to Tech Notice. It is time to review this PC. Now, I know I built it and all the parts and everything was considered and like thought through and things like that. You see PC builds online and it's easy to find them, but what you don't see is people actually reviewing them after they have built them. Being honest about the build, being honest about some of the good sides and bad sides or some of the things that maybe you should consider when, you know, building the same system. So this is exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about all like the review aspects of this, the design, performance, thermals, noise, some of the things that I don't like about it and some of the things I'm very impressed about it. So without no further ado, let's do it. Thanks all the subscribers and people who watched the live stream of this build and actually suggested some names. There was lots of cool things, but I think I'm going to go with the Black Plague because there's a plague in the world at the moment and it is completely black. So the thought process behind this PC was to create a PC that's kind of the jack of all trade, meaning you can do video editing, graphics design. So whether it's single core, multi core rendering or workflow that your program is using, it can do both. And this is exactly what it can do. It's unbelievable uh, single core performance. So whether you're doing photo editing or graphics design, it's absolutely amazing. And I'm seeing like clock speed sometimes even over five gigahertz which is amazing to see for this processor. If you don't know which parts I'm talking about and what are the exact specs, then check out the link in the description below or some of the other videos in the series about this PC so you know like exactly what's going on. So let's talk about the parts and the layout. So basically we're going air cooled with this one. We're not going liquid cooled, uh, no AIO over here and this is all air cooled and this is probably one of the best cases, if not the best case for air cooling PCs. There is a lot of airflow that you can get through and a lot of different bits that I really really like about it. So we are running like a nine fan configuration plus two CPU cooler fans and then there's graphics card fans. So basically we've got two fans in the front over here and these are both ridiculously fast. They're like industrial rated 3000 RPM knock to 140 millimeter fans and when these kick off this, this is like like a like a hoover working the other way it's like a leaf blower that just blows air through so it also cools the graphics card here and if you're wondering how does the cpu cooler and graphics card work together then on this motherboard the layout or how the the gap between the cooler and graphics card is very very good so this noctua nhd 15 fits perfectly in there and there is like maybe an inch gap between the graphics card and the cpu cooler so this air from here can blow between those two as well and keep it Cool, which is very very nice on the top we have 320 millimeter noctua fans and then there's also three fans on the back side and these in the back there are intake fans so they're blowing the air in and then these are exhausting the air out both six fans are linked together into the hub in the back which means that they control the same speed so as much the air comes in it's exactly the same it goes out so they're linked together and if you're wondering like hey you're literally blowing the air into a, a blockage over here then it's not actually the truth how this little shroud over there has designed is that it's it's kind of like pushing the air curving it around towards the motherboard like underneath the motherboard it goes on the back of the motherboard if you put your finger like behind this gap over there you can feel that the air is coming through from there pushing it air and then pushing it through like cooling the RAM and so on the back sides of the motherboard because often the back side of the motherboard can be very hot as well like the back plate of the CPU cooler so now this gets a little bit more cooled in there very nice I'm super happy with that and that's the reason why you don't see any cables going into this shroud or going that way as well that's why our 24 pin ATX and all the fan cables everything goes straight up there and this is the same case here with the GPU uh, cable because you can't get the GPU cable come down and go there because then you literally block in a good feature of the display over here so and you can't go up over there inside there because then you're going to be blocking the airflow from these fans into the CPU so you don't want to do that so basically what we've done is it, like it comes kind of to the side and comes down into the front part over there which I think actually looks quite cool and the way this uh, 24 pin is there as well we didn't use any combs this time then lastly we have this 120 millimeter back fan exhausting the hot air through that 
the CPU cooler is pushed through there and then this one is pushing it out from the back over there and it's doing quite a good job actually and I'm super super happy about it. We've got a 1000 watt power supply over there to power this whole lot. We're only using NVMe drives over here. At the moment I'm using just one drive. There's three slots on the motherboard. All of them are PCIe 4.0 so you can get like full speed of all of them if you wanted to. I'm just using one in the very bottom over there. I think this is actually PCIe 4.0 through the chipset not like from the cpu like according to my performance testing and benchmarks i don't see any lack of performance over there so i'm quite happy about that the reason i put it in the very bottom over there is because at the moment in this pc there is no other pci drives or nvme drives which means that i'm just going to move the heat from like towards the cpu further down underneath there so all the heat like if I'm touching the, the heating over there, it's like warm to the touch over there, which means I'm just keeping it cool and moving the like heat around. If you have everything, especially in the air cool case, if you have all the heat all together in one place, for example, if the GPU is touching this NVMe drives and all of them are there and then the RAM gets hot and everything, it all affects the CPU performance because they all just kind of heat up the CPU cool over here. But in this case, I'm super happy that even these back fans like cool the RAM and everything. So thermal performance is very, very good. While we're talking about the thermal performance, let me move on to like how good are the thermals. Now, without the precision boost overdrive on, the thermals are absolutely amazing. Doing a CPU and GPU maxed out, I'm seeing my CPU roughly around 60 or early 60 degrees as the, like full maxed out and the fans are not even kicking up i've tuned the fans so that the fans start kicking up like after 70 degrees and cl going close to the 80 degrees it's very very good cooling and this is absolutely adequate cooling over there the gpu is roughly around 70 degrees max i can't get it past 70 degrees because just all the airflow in this case is so good it doesn't go that hot which i'm super happy about obviously there's a big chunk of sort of <laughs> heating over here as well which which helps with this and then this in the back as well keeps it all cool i'm super happy with the thermals by turning the precision boost overdrive on because there was such a big thermal headroom in this pc i saw sometimes plus 20 percent performance increase in the multi-core rendering speeds so if you if you're doing like a lot of video editing rendering or you know cinema 4d rendering or something like that with your cpu then that added a lot now it comes with the cost of being very loud it is a lot lot faster when doing that there's roughly around extra 100 watts pulled from the socket and that's why it's good this motherboard because it's got two four plus four cpu pins over there so basically i think one cable is 150 watts but because we're pulling more than that we can actually just pull the power in there and say to the cpu look pull as much as you want because there's a lot you know we can give you so there's lots of headroom over there now i'll compare this to the threadripper system <laughs> this sometimes pulls as much from the socket as the Threadripper 280 watts or 240 watts. Very interesting. And the performance keeps up with the Threadripper. And this is like now the performance bit that I'm super, super happy about. The performance for this PC is, is just amazing. Windows works very snappily. All the programs work snappily. Working with like Adobe products, which are the laggiest, it just works great. Like I haven't had a better experience in terms of PC, how it works because of the her core performance is so so good in terms of the noise now the noise is something that is a little bit let's say an issue but depends what you do now if you work like single core workloads and just working on the pc it's not that loud unless you like that working on 8k footage and then the cpu is massively utilized like 100 percent utilized then it can get loud generally it's okay it only gets loud when we're rendering out and i think that's like a good price to pay for the performance because when you work like every day you know it's fairly quiet but then once we get to like cpu rendering and we're exporting the project you know i'm gonna go get a cup of tea or something like that i'm saying look just do it as fast as you can i don't mind if you're loud just be the best you can it's your choice it's very easy to put the precision boost overdrive on and off in bios so you can do it by one click so now let's talk about a bit more of the bad side of some of the things that um, i'm not so big fan about first of all the hard drive shroud or tray that comes with this case is very very annoying to work with and it's 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 weird so if you want to add hard drives later you kind of have to pull a lot of things out from the case it's not as easy to access it, it's weird it's almost better if if it was like accessible from the front uh, you just pull this off and then pull this 
off and then you can access it from there or from here like let's say this comes off and it comes in from there but because you have to access it from the other side it's not perfect in fact i think it's very poor design if you want any of the 3.5 inch drives if you're going to be struggling fitting all your cables down here, especially if you're running a power supply like that. It doesn't work that well. While we're talking about the case, I wish this side glass panel would be completely clear glass. And this comes with like a darkened glass or dark tempered glass. I wish this was completely see-through because now when it's dark, you can't see all the pieces inside. Now, when you've got a lot of RGB, it's not an issue. But if in terms of our design here, which is all black, you kind of want to see the black inside and want to see that it's just like all black in there. Another issue, which for me is probably the biggest issue over here, is the PSU coil wine. Now, I've tried it with different um, like power supplies and it's not the power supply issue per se because all of the power supplies did it, but just because of the graphics card and power supply. Now, if there's someone knows this problem a bit further, let me know in the comment section below. But basically, power supply is, is whining a little bit. There's just like an electrical little... very very quietly there but it's annoying because it's different from the fan noise i wish it just wasn't there now i do have this on the third river build as well and it's something to do with like the graphics card and the pc psu running together just a little bit of annoying coil wine on there one annoying downside about the motherboard is this wi-fi antenna thing so this thing over here it's not magnetic and i wish it was now if you've had a magnetic uh, wi-fi antenna from motherboard manufacturer like a gigabyte then you're not gonna want to go back because because it's so helpful to have it magnetic and just like click on to anywhere on the case and it's not just gonna fly around or whatever you do it's just everywhere so I hope MSI is gonna like add a little magnetic sticker or something on the bottom of their uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna that would be awesome and last of all it's the CPU performance now I've recently also did a 5900x build which is like the 12 core processor and it's quite a bit cheaper than this 5950x processor 16 cores versus 12 cores or fifth generation of ryzen processors and in terms of the live video playback and you know performance what i had on the computer there wasn't actually that much of a difference so if you do want to save a little bit you can go with the 5900x the 12 core model of this processor uh, if like the rendering performance isn't that important to you if you're doing a lot of rendering and things like that you might want to go for this one but if like video playback speed is the most important thing i didn't really see that much of a difference compared to this one so there is a little bit of money to save if you wanted to go for that if you're not doing a lot of gpu rendering or gpu heavy effects or things like that then you can go with a little bit of a lower gpu in terms of video editing especially in uh, adobe premiere pro you're not going to see a massive difference between this and the 3070 and i tested this now with the 3070 as well unless you do a lot of gpu heavy effects and very gpu heavy then this is that unless you do 8k workflow then this gpu is good for that because you're gonna have the 24 gigs of vram which you're gonna need for doing that big of uh, video resolution editing so i think that covers like all of my thoughts on this uh, pc i'm super happy generally with like how it turned out and uh, the build process was nice it, it, it was absolutely amazing to put this together so if you want to pick out this pc and build it yourself i'm going to leave the links of the parts in the description below so if you buy the parts and then follow the like live stream build guide how we did it you can build it for yourself as well these links in the description will be affiliate links so i will get a commission with no extra cost to you so if you choose to do that thank you very much as always hit that like button if you enjoyed this video hit that dislike button button twice if you didn't like my accent and subscribe if you haven't already because more videos like these is coming out every single week thanks guys for watching i'll meet you in the comment section below bye bye